Hello, it's Pete here, and today we are gonna be showing you some wonderful techniques. Techniques using the two 3D texture fades from Tim Holtz, chapter three. They are numbered, and this lovely one called Industrious. And let's take a look at how they come out when they're embossed. So, let's get cracking with those techniques. So, numbered and industrious. And again, I'll hold this up, but this time I'm gonna move it around just a little so that the light catches this. Now, this is embossed with matte opulent cardstock. And it looks spectacular as it is, but there are quite a few techniques that we can employ to get the best out of these two phenomenal, phenomenal embossing folders. And it's just crazy, the depth of detail in these two, particularly this one. Nothing is repeated. Everything, every little facet, quite incredible. Really, really fantastic. So let's show you the first techniques and I'm gonna bring in distress inks for this one. So I'll put that to one side. Now, if I take a couple of pieces of white card, I've got some white and some black here because we're gonna do two different ones with this. The first one, I'm just gonna take my distress inks and I've got my minis here, distress minis. Incidentally, if you love distress inks, if you want to add to your collection, then you can find it on the Sizzix website. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is choose the colors I want. So I think I'm gonna come in with Twisted Citroen. I'm gonna use Evergreen Bow. And finally, my old friend, Broken China. So we'll put these to one side for just a second. And I'll start with the Twisted Citroen. So let's take off the top. I always keep my little foam pads underneath so I know which one belongs to which. Uh, we'll start, as I say, with Twisted Citroen. These are quite new pads, so I'm gonna work on the outside and I'm gonna start to come in. I'm using, incidentally, the Media Mat, the Sizzix Media Mat, which is perfect if you're using any acrylics, any distress products, if you're watercoloring, things like that. The, the key thing about it is, is that you can see, you can see the ink. So if you're doing smooching techniques, for example, you can see the ink on your mat, which is really great. I, I, I've used the, uh, the other mats, they're fantastic, but of course you don't get to see as clearly the depth of the ink. So now I've come in quite heavy at the top and I'm starting to fade this out. And you just need to take your time. Obviously, as I move down the card, there's gonna be less ink on the sponge, so that allows me to get this lovely fade effect. So I'll take this one off and come in with my evergreen bow. Remember, some of these colors are quite dark, they're quite intense, so they're quite unforgiving. So I always start on the outside like that. And it deposits the ink onto the map. So if you want to bring in more ink, you can simply pick it up. The last thing you want to do, and I'm sure those of you who are experienced with distress inks, as you well know, is this, boom, straight down there. You'll just get a circle. That's the last thing you want because we want a nice smooth blend. You can see the intensity of the ink there when I place it onto the mat, but I'm fading that in. Lovely, lovely color. It's a very blue-green, so it's a perfect tone to work from this lovely, fresh, twisted citron green at the top down to broken china at the bottom. Now, let's bring in this broken china, and this time I'll start at the bottom. Do you see the intensity of the color there? See how it comes in, that's what I want, that's what I want. Starting really strong at the base and then start to blend it in to that green at the top. There we are, that's coming from the other corner. There it is, you see, there's that ink. We're gonna blend it in. I can pick up more ink from my mat. There we are, I'm from the base, blending into that lovely evergreen bow. 
gorgeous, gorgeous color. Really is. Wow, that's a pretty nice blend. If I do say so myself. Oh, well, I'm not taking the credit. The credit belongs to the inks and of course, Mr. Holtz. So let's put these away. They will live to fight another day. Pop them off to one side. And now I'm going to emboss this. But cardstock, uh, plain cardstock, when embossing with a 3D embossing folder or texture fades, we usually spritz both sides, but I've applied the ink, so that's still quite damp on the top. I'm just gonna sprint, spritz the bottom. If I spritz the top, of course, it would give me that lovely mottled effect, but that's not what I'm going for this time around. Now, the machine I'm using today is Tim's fold-away machine. This is the Tim Holtz model. So I'll just open up the handle the wings, click it into place, and that, my friends, is now exactly the same size as a big shot with all the great cutting that one comes to expect from that machine. And I'm using just the base platform and one plate. That's important when using 3D embossing folders, just a single cutting plate. And you know what? The instructions are all there for you, so it's very hard to make any mistakes. So. Let's, so you see, I'm, I'm rubbing in the water onto the back of this cardstock. That's quite important. So you give it time to seep into the fibers. There's a very good reason for that. And that reason is that they need time to stretch. And when they stretch, you get a much deeper, much more detailed, much crisper emboss. So I'll put my folder into the machine with the plate on top and simply wind it through. Now with 3D embossing, there's no such thing as too much. You can run this through. I usually run it through twice, you know, three times. It's fine, whatever you want. The more you do it, the more intense the emboss becomes. Three, three is about the maximum, to be honest with you. Now, I've got my, uh, I've got my ink on the mat, as you can see. Why use a medium mat like this? Well, here you go, how about that? Spritz with a bit of water and it comes up clean straight away. Fabulous. Okay, now I'm ready to go again. Let's have a look at how this came out. You can see, you can see the depth of the emboss on the back there. But if I hold that up, can you see how cool that is? Now I'm going to do something else with this. I'm not quite finished with it. But before I do, we're going to switch to another piece of white card. But this time I'm going to use the industrious embossing folder. So let's reach over and grab some more distressing. So I've got my browns and I've got my, I've got my oranges and reds there as well. Let's come in with a really dark, oh, ground espresso, how wonderful. So I've got vintage photo, that's a lovely warm brown. Ground espresso, that's a very deep, intense brown, almost, almost bordering towards black there. And I'll bring in some spiced marmalade. I think that will do the trick. So of course these are interchangeable. Please choose the tones that best suit you or indeed best suit the embossing folder. It's important that you're happy. That's, that's all I care about. So I'm going to start off this time. I'm coming in with the spiced marmalade and I'm going to pretty much cover this all over. So, and with this, with this technique, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if I get that blob in the middle because this one is all about those little imperfections. That is the nature of this embossing folder. So the base, I'm using the industrial, the base is gonna kind of look like, um, you know, this is the rust. This is the rust that, that is created in that metal. So you can see it's very, very imperfect. If I wanted to blend this smoothly and seamlessly, I could do that. It takes a little more time, but with this one, it's really not important. So again, coming from the sides, picking some of that ink up again, bringing it into my folder. 
but you can see the difference. Remember when we were doing the first one, I wanted a smooth blend, and I said, don't do this, right? Because that's what you get, and it's very hard to obliterate that afterwards. But with this one, it really, really doesn't matter. And then finally, just get down to that bottom corner. I can see I need a bit more there. And that's it. So that's my orange. That was spice marmalade. You could use any one of the wonderful oranges in the set. And I'm gonna pick that up again. Let's just take these out of the way for a second. I'm gonna pick that up. I'm gonna spritz the back as before. So rub it in. Let the water do its thing. Let it get into that cardstock. Let it get in between those fibers so that they can stretch and give you that lovely crisp emboss. Now, the folder itself, it's, it is industrious. It is, it's almost like plate steel that has succumbed to the rigors of time and weather and given us that lovely, and I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated with trying to replicate um, those kind of industrial effects. The effects of time, the effects of weathering, the effects of sunlight, you know, the way that they bleach things out. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, and luckily with the products that Tim is brought to our craft market, it makes my life a whole lot easier. So, here we are. There's the orange you see. Now that, that is just the orange itself. That is pretty cool without even adding anything to it. But I'm gonna spritz onto my mat, get rid of that orange ink. Now, if you've got that ink, um, on your mat and you've got a piece of spare card, just spritz it and then put the card into it and lift it. You get some wonderful, wonderful effects. So no waste, absolutely no waste. Uh, right, let's see where I'm going with this. Okay, this is the first one that I did. Now I'm gonna do something now. I'm gonna add a little bit of white acrylic paint to my mat. Now. What I'm gonna do, I could, I could ink over the top with a deeper ink, maybe a deeper blue, deeper green, you know, to, to bring that to the fore. And I'll show you some good examples of that in a second. But what I'm gonna do this time, slightly different, I'm mixing distress inks with acrylic paint. And I'm just gonna pick that up on my brush because I'm gonna be, this is what we call dry brushing. So I'm just touching this very, very delicately as I go over the top. And that will lighten the surface. It will get in between, you know, there's no doubt about that, but it's an effect, so it's imperfect. And it's the imperfection that makes this what it is because it's that type of embossing folder. We see all this lovely broken up detail in between these numbers. And there are umpteen ways of applying acrylic. This is just one. A bit later on, I'm gonna show you another one, uh, which, which is quite spectacular, actually using a brayer. But um, there we are, we're picking up those colors, so I'm getting lighter on the top level. That's where, these, where those lovely numbers are. You can see they're just feathering across it. You can go much lighter with dry brushing you can get a really even effect. But it all comes down to putting very little white on your brush and going over and over and over until you get what you want. But there we are, that's using the white acrylic paint. Pretty cool, let's, let's bring in. Now here's some, other, here's some other examples, some other color blends that I did without the dry brushing. There's one, here's another one. This has got a richer red. It hasn't got that pink at the top. Then next up, we've got, we've got the greens that I just did. So that's what it looks like. So this is a kind of before and after because that's, that's what happened before. And this is what happens after when we do that lovely dry brush effect. It just helps to bring out that detail a bit stronger. So, oh, and one more before we go. So we've got a purple going into a blue, going into a green. Lovely, really, really nice effect. So let's take 
Now, of course, I've got some acrylic on there. I'm just gonna wipe that away in the same way. It comes up cleanly every single time. And let's go back to our industrious. So we've got that lovely orange there, but the detail, the detail isn't really showing through as much as I'd like it to at this point. So this is where my distress inks come into play. And I'm gonna start off with, I've got to check underneath that I've got the right ones actually. Yep, and that is, my vintage photo. Um, so you can see that's quite a warm brown, but I'm rubbing most of it off because it's like anything. You can always, you can always add more, but you can never quite take it away. But if we look at the difference here, look at that corner, look how it's just working over the top level. And these texture phases, it's not like there are two levels. There are lots of multi-levels in between as well. So we'll put that back down. And we'll come in again. You know what? I'm thinking I might even use a second color here or a third color rather. It's never a good idea. Well, it's always a good idea when you get a good idea. But when you're working on a film like this and you've done so much work towards it and you think, oh, what if I tried this? What if it doesn't work? Well, who cares, quite frankly, because it's an experiment. And that's what we're doing. That's why we do what we do. That's why we are designers. We are makers. Because I, like you, I like to experiment. I like to play around. I like to see. And that's, that's how we grow, you know, as makers. Not being afraid to try something new. Or to say, hey, what if, what if I did this? What if I did that? There you go, so we're bringing that in there a bit more. And that's it, so that really, really has, and this is, this, is just, this is just the launch pad, this is the start, this is the first color. So you can see the uh, huge difference already. I mean, if you rewind to what this looked like two, three minutes ago, it's like chalk and cheese. I'm gonna go, I am gonna go back to my, uh, back to my distress inks. And I'm going to bring in, I thought, you know what, what if we bring in some aged mahogany, which is a lovely, rich, reddy brown color. Because I want to try and see, we've got that intense orange right there. Let's see what happens if I, ah, there you go. That's, that's what I was hoping for. Just that intensity, that lovely red. But you'll notice I'm not putting it all over just picking out certain areas. Uh, thank you very much, Age Mahogany. You really came through for me there. Right, now, let's go back in. Now, this is ground espresso. Very intense, dark color. You see the difference there? That's a warm brown. This one is much darker, much, much deeper. And I'm starting off on the edges. I wanna go around those edges, just picking up Picking up that detail there, working off the mat. It's always uh, off the folder rather. It's always important to start on the mat and then, then bring it in, just in case we've got too much on our foam. There we so I'm rubbing quite, quite vigorously as well. That, that makes a big difference to the application of the color. If you go very soft, you get um, a much more subtle effect. If you go in deep, boom, just like that. And then I just work around these edges. See that lovely orange coming through? And that's why we need to use, when we, when we are inking a folder, never just settle for the one tone. Just try and get two or three in there. Now, finally, I'm gonna take some more of this ink and I'm working over these rivets or screw heads. Uh, but I'm not going too heavy. I just wanna pick up, pick up those rivets. And, and that, that my friend, is that. Pretty cool, I think, I think you'll agree that age mahogany uh, really has made a difference with this one. Uh, the intense orange, you know, we, we varied the orange, the intensity of it as well underneath, that red over the top. So just play around, get your distress inks, you know, see, 
take it in whatever direction you want to take it. And that, my friends, is Distressing 101 with these two lovely folders. Okay, now, um, I couldn't do this industrious uh, collection without bringing in my beloved luster waxes. These are the three that we currently have in the range. We have gold, rose gold, and silver, and I'm going to use all three because one by itself is spectacular. Three together, oh my goodness! Now, obviously, lasso axes, they will work on all colors, but I do particularly like them on just black cards. So this time, I'm going to spritz both sides because now I can, because now there's no ink on this, so I'm going to move that water around. That is softening. Usually what I do when I do this as well, I'll put that to one side for a minute or so just to let that water really seep in. Let's bring in my Tim Holtz fold away machine. And again, just the base platform. I'm taking my black card and popping it into the folder so it's sandwiched between both sides. And then I'm gonna pop that onto the platform and simply wind it through. Again, we're going for twice. And back. So I'll pop that to one side. Fold away. Incidentally, if you've never used a fold away, uh, it's a great machine. It's exactly the same as the Big Shot in terms of what you can do with it. But the crucial thing is, is that you can fold it away. So if you've got a craft space, like, oh, there's one there. Ha <laughs> ha. How about that? If you've got a craft space which is a bit small, or you you want to put your stuff away at night on a shelf or something like that, it's much better from a storage point of view. So there's my card. All done. Um, not much to see at this point. You can see the depth of the emboss, but it's not really popping. And that's where these guys come in super handy. So now I'm working, this is a piece of scrap. It's from some packaging actually. So I'm gonna start with the rose gold. Now the rose gold on black, it can appear kind of copper or brass or brassy. And the reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm working on this card to start with, is because sometimes when you pick this up, you can get a big blob on your finger. That is a disaster because you put it on your project and it just makes a mess, which can't be cleaned up again. As wonderful as this is, it's very unforgiving. So I'm going to work quite deep with this. So I want to get, with my first coat, the rose gold, I want to kind of get into these cracks as much as I can. But crucially, because of the nature of the folder, the gaps in between, the black, it remains black. You see, you see the screw heads there? The luster wax isn't getting into them. Um, and that is quite important for the finished effect. So we'll come around here. Yeah. You can see it, you can see it already starting to take shape. You can see the difference between the top and the bottom there. See, now that time I got too much on my finger, which is why it's crucial that I go to the scrap card before moving over to the project. So you can, you can almost use this like a palette, so you can put a lot on there and you can pick it up as you go along. Wow. Now, you know what? A lot of people would be more than happy with what we've got here, using that rose gold over the black. It, it looks absolutely glorious already. Really cool effect. So the black's showing through underneath, obviously. Now, but I'm gonna come in with a couple of other colors. I'm gonna come in, first of all, my gold. And again, working into the card, making sure I haven't got too much on my fingertip. And this time, I'm not going over the whole thing. I'm just picking out certain areas. So we're doing the same kind of thing that we did when we were using the distressings. 
we want an uneven, imperfect finish. I want, be, I want it to be light in places, I want it to be dark in places. I want to pick up some accents in certain areas as well. There we are. So you can see here, I've left there, I've left there, I've left this corner, I've left the center there. So that's fine, that's absolutely fine. Now, let's get most of the excess off my finger before the silver. So I am working, you'll notice as well, it's not a rule, but I always like to go, when I'm using the three, I like to go from light to dark because this silver, this is gonna be the highlights, um, both literally and metaphorically. So these are starting to pop out because obviously the silver is much, much brighter. So there we are. I'm, I'm concentrating at the moment, particularly on these, on these screw heads. And that's making quite, quite a difference. And let's bring that silver into different areas, less than the rose gold, which of course, uh, less than the gold rather, which of course was less than the rose gold. So we've gradually cut back lots of rose gold, quite a bit of gold, little bit of silver. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is what we end up. So however you choose to use that, you're gonna get spectacular results. It, it's a great technique, it's a great product, and it doesn't take much skill to apply this. In fact, I would say you could be as good as me in about five minutes. If you follow those few simple tips, it's so easy. There you go. Now. Let's replace those. I will be showing you some other ones that I've done using these uh, when we get to the end of our techniques, but we are gonna move on to a technique, well, two techniques actually, uh, on the same one using some wonderful acrylics. Right, now, now, I'm gonna be using some wonderful acrylics. I'm gonna be using Tim Holtz Distress paints, the acrylic paints. They dry very, very matte. Um, and uh, the, the key thing is they're a distress product, so they match up with the spray inks, the distress inks, and of course, the distress oxides. So I've got them already. I've got little blobs of those already on my mat. And to save a bit of time, I've embossed my numbered folder with, uh, on black card. So same technique, same process as before. Now, as I said, a couple of techniques here. I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna start off by picking up, and this is just a sea sponge. You can use all kinds of things for this. I, this is my preferred method. Don't want too much on this. Um, I wanna see how it goes initially. And I'm dragging, I'm dragging in one direction down the card already. I'm pretty happy with what we got here. Now, I'm, you can see I'm actually making the color a bit more intense there. That's fine, that's fine. It's about imperfection. It's about being daring. It's about trying new things. So if you've got some acrylics, Kicking about, give it a go. You may surprise yourself. A bit more in there. Right, now you see some of those, it looks a bit blotchy over here. And you say, oh, pee, pee, it was looking so good, you ruined it. No, 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 no. There is method in my madness, which hopefully will become apparent as we go on. Now this is dry to the touch already. That's pretty staggering. Um, I do love a good matte acrylic. So I'm coming in with a richer, much richer color here. And you see that? More bright, more vibrant. So again, why use one color when you can use two? So we'll pop, just, so I'm just picking up little areas, not all over, it just gives it a bit more, a bit more interest. So that, that's looking good. Now that, straight up, I'm happy with that. I could put that onto a project, no problem. But there's more to come, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm using my Distress Brea. This is another product by Tim. Again, you will find this on our website. There's a small one and a medium. And I'm going with this lovely lilac color. 
So again, everything on the media mat. And what you should do with a brayer, when you're using a brayer, okay, is lift it. Don't just run it back in two like that. Lift it every time as you go through there. And what that will do, it will make sure you get an even coating on your bread. Hugely, hugely important. Um, not so much for this one because we're doing a different technique, but normally if you want to get a nice smooth coat, this is the way to do it. Now, might seem an unlikely combination, this lilac and the green, but look at that. And again, there's no care in this whatsoever. I'm just going back into, I've got a broken effect, doesn't really matter. Again, let's embrace that imperfection. So that's it, the lilac, it's covered in some places, it's left gaps in others. That's what we're all about today. So let's, let's get some of this off. You don't have to clean between applications. It doesn't really matter. This is, this is mixed media and it's all about having fun. Now I'm using this antique linen color. This is a sort of a, almost like a kind of a cream. And with this, I don't want a lot on my bread because I just want to pick up certain areas. So I'm going very, very light. Again, you can add more. You can't take it away though, folks. There we are. And that's it. Um, there is one other thing that I want to do and I want to add some stamped detail. Um, whatever stamps you have to hand. If you have some of Tim's lovely stamp as anonymous stamp, and you will find those on our website as well, then go and check them out. They're a perfect accompaniment to these gorgeous folders. And there we are. And you can see I didn't use a stamp uh, platform, I didn't use a block, I just picked up the stamp and stuck it straight on there because we're not looking for a perfect image. And there we have it, that's it, all done. Play around with colors, play around with the texture, do whatever you feel is right because it is right. There's, nothing, there's no wrong in Pete's world, okay? Just try those different colors, try different combinations. Try mixing acrylics with distress inks, with distress oxide, with the sprays, whatever you have to hand. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of some of the things that I've done using these techniques. And let's go back to distress inks. Now, here we'll see two that were done with distress inks. Remember the first one where we did that kind of rainbow card there? Well, this one, I've actually done that, run it through the machine, and then inked over the top with a darker color. That is another great way of bringing out the, uh, the detail instead of dry brushing. It's the opposite of dry brushing in many ways, but that's all distress ink. This bottom one, we saw that earlier. Now these two, these two are distress sprays. So that's another thing you can combine with your other distress products to get this wonderful, wonderful intensity. Look at that, look at that purple at the bottom there, wow. Boom, and that's just two, that's the purple and the green mixed together, absolutely perfect. Now, um, how about this? This is the, oh, wrong way around. Is there a wrong way? I don't think there is, is there? Nah. So these two were done with the, um, with the luster waxes, you can see this is the one that we did earlier, and this is numbered. So that one is equally spectacular in my opinion. And the last technique, the one that we just did, the acrylic one, let's have a look at some nice examples there. That's similar to the one that I've just done. So see what I said about mixing unlikely combinations. Um, yeah, there's some really cool stuff going on there. That lovely mustard combined with the pink. Oh. Perfect, I could eat that, I really could. Um, but there we have it, uh, that's it. I mean, those were just, those were just, what, four slightly different techniques uh, with a range of products. Use whatever you have to hand to get the best out of these. Just if you're embossing with opulent cardstock, it's gonna look spectacular. The main thing is that you have fun with these. Also, check out Tim's other chapter three dies the the magnificent if you have time please 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 go to tim's website look at the live video that he did explaining the story behind the dies 
behind the embossing folders and showing some truly magnificent examples by his wonderful design team. Um, but that's it from me. Thank you. I've really enjoyed that. A lot of fun. Um, but, but join us uh, where, wherever, across, across the website, on YouTube, you know, so many different places you can find us popping up. So join us there and see what some of the other great designers have come up with. I've been Pete. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.